to On The Volley, and this is a special World Cup edition. I'm here with Matt, he's back with us. Glad to have you back again, Matt. Nice to be back. Thank you very Hopefully much. we'll see Matt play uh, a few more times over the World Cup. Now, we're outside the Finnegan's Irish pub, the Celtic pub in Rome, in the centre of Rome. Basically our local. Anyway, so, are you looking forward to the World Cup? Yeah. Not as much as I've done previous World Cups, uh, but you know, it's a bit of football. It's coming right in the middle of the season. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. Uh, obviously, not happy about it being in Qatar either. We, we may go into that a little bit later on. But yeah, you know, it is a World Cup. And I think once it starts going, we'll probably all get into it a bit more. I, uh, I, I have to say that I do agree with you. Uh, I think the consensus of opinion is having the World Cup in the middle of a season. I mean, it's just unheard of. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, we, we really had nothing to say because uh, the fans have no say in the matter. It is what it is. And I've, I've heard a lot about, you know, a lot of criticism. Uh, I'm not going to go into the politics of, of the World Cup. Let's stick to, I want to stick to the football. You can give your opinion, okay? As everyone is free to give their opinions. Um, but I'm going to stick to the football. I'll be honest with you. Um, I agree with you. Uh, because it's in the middle of the season, it's a little bit of a pain. And there's not that noise in the background there, but we should get yeah, uh, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they're my boys, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't really say anything to them. But anyway, back to the football. And now that we're getting there, I am really, really looking forward to it. Uh, I've got to say that. It's a pain in the arse stopping the season. Uh, it's you, the season. It's you, Arsenal, you know, going well, weren't they? So, <laughs> Arsenal, I mean, so you, know, you know what's going to happen yeah. after the World Cup? Is there going to be any injuries? Uh, how that's going to affect your season? Exactly. I mean, we've got Arsenal top of the league, Celtic top of the league. The last thing we need is injuries midway through the season. And, you know, let's be honest, there is definitely a chance that that can happen, not just for us, for any team. So I think this is why I said the consensus of opinion was why the hell are you holding a World Cup in the middle of the season? And why are you holding it in Qatar? Okay, where it's going to be like 40, 50 degrees of heat. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's been moved, obviously. I mean, everyone knows about this. It's been moved to this period because it's cooler in Qatar. But yeah, I mean, the uh, idea... Like well, it's cooler than 50 degrees, so, but it's 40 degrees, so, uh, so, I mean, <laughs> that makes a lot of difference. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, saw, saw pictures of England Wales training uh, today, and the, 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 the training out in the open, you know, they're training in air-conditioned stadiums, um, and, you know, there, there is a bit of heat fatigue that's going to go on in this World Cup, I think, without a doubt, uh, with the teams, and, yes, um, the decision to hold it in Qatar, I think we all know why that was held, and that was upheld, and that was because, and why they gave it two World Cups out in the same year was probably because of the person who was in charge at the time. You might have thought he might not be there four years later to make another decision on the World Cup. So, um, you know, and I saw this week he's tried to throw a bit of rubber Platini again, saying it was all about France and Sarkozy uh, getting involved. But he's the one who made the choice to, well, actually, to have two World Cups announced in the same year. Yeah, well, actually, he turned around and he said that you were so should have got it. Yeah, he says that now, but I mean, yeah. that, you know, now, now the money's in the bank, he's not yeah. bothered, is he? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, he, he can say what he wants because he's been found out to be then as a nine bob no. <laughs> Uh, I allegedly, as I don't know, oh, no, got, got, got uh, done for it. They, okay. they, they've been found out to be found as a nine bobber. Okay. So, okay. well, I, I didn't really follow it too much. Yeah. It didn't interest me. Okay, so I mean, you know, did they get? Oh, that, 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 that wasn't re related to this decision. Yeah. That, that, they have been found out to be. Did they? Did they get put in prison? No, but they've been banned from all football for. for, for, for De nearly a decade, I think it is. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would have been prison then. But, uh, but hey, yeah, it is what it is. is. Okay, we, we don't decide that. Anyway, let's get to the football. Right, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's have a, a quick run through the groups, okay, right? Now, Group A is made up of Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and Netherlands. Um, 
pretty easy group for Netherlands. Okay. Uh, 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 Senegal. 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 Pretty, pretty decent. Although we are missing uh, Mane. Uh, uh, missing Mane, yeah. Who obviously is a big player for them. Uh, but, you know. Well, second place goes around there, you know. It's, uh, yeah, but I, I think second place is going to be between Senegal and Ecuador. Yeah. You know, the Latin American teams are normally quite good. I don't know much about Ecuador. Uh, so, and to be totally honest, I don't know that much about Senegal. Netherlands should walk here, and it's going to be one of those two that go through. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think uh, Netherlands will probably win that group. Uh, I think Senegal is strong. They're a bit stronger than you think, maybe. Uh, you can have Wendy, Senegalese, isn't it? Um, you know, the, 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 the team that's, that's been there, there about as well yeah. for a number of years, you know, it's not a new thing for them being in a major tournament. Well, uh, I'd like to see Ecuador them. is. Ecuador is yeah. completely yeah. new, really. Um, uh, they've got obviously three Premier League players playing at Brighton. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much all we know about Ecuador. Uh, but yeah, Qatar. Well, they shouldn't be there, uh, as we've still said previously. No, no they're, 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 they're just they're just there to make up make up the numbers in that group. I think. Uh, uh, they're, they're there because they're the host nation. Yeah, exactly. okay, the host nations always get a place, so we know that, yeah. Uh, and that goes without saying. If they weren't the host nations, would they have qualified? I think not. Okay, so it is what it is. Okay, you can't change that. They're there. Let's see what they do. Um, I think they will go out in the, in, the, in the first round, group stages, um, unless they get a lot more from the referees. <laughs> yeah, maybe that is as well, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't know what's, uh, maybe a bit of local pressure will be applied. Uh, uh, let's, let's hope not. Let's hope the integrity of the tournament is at least kept intact. Um, that, uh, as, their, as their world ranking dictates, should not get a point in that group. <laughs> They shouldn't be, but they could surprise you, yeah. You never know. They could surprise you. Who knows? Anyway, uh, it, we'll see what will happen. Uh, they're the first game, obviously. On yeah, the yeah, that's Sunday, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Ecuador, actually, so we'll, we'll, we'll find out pretty soon. Oh, exactly. Uh, we consider those two probably the weaker teams in that group. Uh, so, yeah, we'll find out quite quite early on our cut Well, let's go, to, let's go to Group B. Oh, this is yeah. interesting. England, Iran, USA and Wales. Yeah, I think this is the best. It's well, probably the most interesting group anyway. Yeah. Um, not only because you've got the England Wales rivalry in there, but you've also got Iran versus USA, which is always, <laughs> always got a bit of needle in it, hasn't it? Very, um, very interesting. And actually, some good work teams in there as well. I think that's quite a collection of highly ranked teams in there. England five at the moment, I think. USA are 14, Wales is, I think, 17 in the world. So, you know. Uh, so ranked 16th yeah. in the World Cup group. Yeah, so, so you've got three, three teams in the top 16 in the World Cup at the moment. It were rankings in that group. So I think even if you're not an England fan or a Welsh fan, then I think it's a good group to watch. I think it's a great exciting. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be supporting the home nations. Uh, you know, it goes without saying. So I'm going to support England and Wales. I want them both to go through, uh, but I think USA could be a surprise package in that group. And apparently, from what I've heard, Iran are quite a hard team to break down. Yeah, that's, that's what I remember about Iran. They're, they're very, you know, in your face and sort of, they'll kick you, kick you off the pitch, basically. And then, um, yeah, it'll be hard to beat, you know, be a typical sort of like, a, I don't know, kind of some other nice sort of like team, you know, it's like, Probably, yeah, sort of like that sort of, if, if you're thinking about, you know, in terms of football you, you have watched. Yeah, that's yeah. behind the ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Sort of like, you know, in your face. And, uh, and and having a go at it. So uh, I think you know, that'll be interesting how teams break them down. They may be the kingmaker, if you like, in that group by, by uh, not um, by taking points off someone, uh, I guess. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Iran managed to nick a point or two, OK? Uh, I'm pretty sure they've got an Iranian Vinnie Jones type of player in, in, in their squad. They've got ten of them. <laughs> maybe, maybe, who knows, who knows. So that, that'll be interesting to see as well, OK? Um, OK, Group C, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. I think in any other World Cup we'd probably call this a, 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 a group of death. I do not. I mean, there's some, uh, some decent teams in there who can do, on the day, who can beat anyone. Um, Saudi Arabia excluded from that, maybe. But Poland, 
don't really turn up at performance, but I've got some great players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just seeing obviously everyone knows about probably most people's one of them. One of the two favourites of the World Cup, I would say. Most people will have them or Brazil. Uh, Mexico, obviously, every World Cup, they, they, have a good, they have a good ton. You know, they're, they're a pretty decent side. Uh, they're, a, they're a decent side, yeah. So, I mean, you know, Argentina should walk in. I personally believe Argentina will go through uh, to the next group, say, uh, you know, to the next round, say, last 16. Uh, and it's going to be between Poland and Mexico. My money would go on Poland. Yeah, I think I think I would agree with that. I think uh, just just got the edge over Mexico for me. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Tell us what you think. Yeah, okay, based on our, our opinions. Yeah. Anyway, okay, Group D. Excuse me, Group D. France, Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. Yeah, interesting group. Well, France uh, on paper should go through. But they've got a lot of problems in house. They have a lot of problems in house. So whether or not they can um, resolve their internal problems, okay, and come onto the big stage and turn it on, I think they can. But we'll wait and see. What I would like to see, though, is Australia making it to the last 16. And that's all because of that man named Costa Cosley, uh, the Celtic uh, manager. Okay. So yeah, uh, I, I, I will be supporting Australia. Careful what you wish for it, because um, the winner up in that group will play the winner of the group of England and Wales. So um, careful what you wish for. Although actually France and Denmark are very strong in that group, um, I don't really see Australia getting out of it. Denmark, um, I, you know, dark horses. The dark horses at the Euros, you know, um, we've got Ericsson back as well, actually playing again now, um, after his, uh, agree with you. his, you know, near death on the pitch um, in the Euros. Yeah. Um, strong team, good, good bond together, complete opposite, as, as you said, for France, they're yeah. always yeah. fractured. Uh, when they do get it together, they're a brilliant team. Yes. But yeah, which French turns off? The one that's fractured, like the 2010 World Cup, or, or the one that won it in 2018. But, so, you know, we'll wait and see. Uh, my, my thoughts on that were that Denmark would actually win that group, which would then put uh, England and France, if England were to win their groups, uh, or Wales, uh, would kind of keep them away from France uh, up until the finals. Well, look, if, 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 if I'm thinking with my head, then I agree with you 100% France and Denmark to go through, okay? My heart wants Australia, yeah. okay? Uh, you know, I'm going to say that publicly, okay? My heart wants Australia to go through because of Ange, okay? Uh, because of what he's done at Celtic, and because sometimes we underestimate, you know, teams from like Australia and, and these kinds of African countries, so on and so forth. Uh, I remember when the African countries first started playing in the World Cup, yeah, they were all underrated, all just basically, you know, that's the side of uh, Cameroon, famously here in 1990. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, so I sometimes go for the underdog, just for a little bit of, um, a, bit of, bit of, of a bit of interest, a little bit of like, you know, um, oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't speak English anymore, I can't remember the word. Anyway, you know what I mean, yeah? You know what I mean, yeah? So, Group B, Spain, Costa Rica, Germany and Japan. Yeah, um, it's a, a tough group actually. Uh, it is a tough group, yeah. Um, Costa Rica, you know, you, I don't know where they are at the moment. But I don't rate like Costa Rica. I, I, remember, I remember them from Brazil, they, they were well, they, they finished above England. Uh, but that wasn't quite hard, that wasn't that hard in that, in that uh, World Cup. Uh, Japan obviously, they've had several tournaments now. Um, I'd love them to go for qualifiers, plenty of qualifiers for the World Cup these days. I'd love them to look through to the last 16. Yeah, that would mean Germany or Spain miss out. Miss out. I don't see it, to be honest. I don't see it. I think, I think, I think those two are still quite strong. Uh, I know, but I'll be supporting Japan. Like, experience as well. I'll be supporting Japan in Group B. Ask me why. Uh, have you got them on the uh, on the toe? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a man. Oh, you've got all the uh, Celtic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ida Gucci, even though only Dyson Maida has been picked, and that, for me, is criminal. 
And that said, even though those players weren't picked, we have a Celtic player in there, Tyson Mader, who he's had uh, uh, quite a few critics okay, for his performances at Celtic, which I don't agree with. Uh, I think the guy is underrated. I want him to have a great World Cup, and I want Japan to do well. So, if you're from Japan, you got me back in you. Yeah, I was actually, I was actually in uh, London uh, last weekend watching England, Japan, and the rugby. And, you know, I, I've always had a, a federation with Japan and uh, affinity with Japan, should I say. Uh, yeah, I always want them to do well. I always want them to do well. Uh, good luck to you guys. Good luck. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, good luck. Yeah, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. Okay, well, Canada. I can't remember them ever being in a World Cup. I've <laughs> got a few Canadian mates, and I think they believe it's their first World Cup. Uh, their first one for a number of decades. No, I think I think it is their first yeah. one. I, I, can't, I really can't remember. I can't remember what I did last night. I guess they've been playing after the next legends <laughs> about Canada and World Cups, yeah. Um, they were a decent team. They were decent. They, they got through qualifying quite easily, actually. Yeah, they played they play decent football. Morocco. Another decent team. Yeah, no, 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 no. Potential part banana skin for yeah. two of the classic teams of the era, basically Belgium and Croatia. And then you uh, yeah, yeah, Croatia and Belgium. So personally, okay, you were talking about uh, Group uh, C being the game of uh, Group F. Group F, F yeah. yeah, I think Group F is probably even harder. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah maybe I've mis misread that a little bit. Although group, look at Group G as well. That's not that's not too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, who do you reckon is going to go through? Uh, who, who are yours? I, I would say Belgium, Croatia. I mean, Croatia, you think they've got an age. You always do that on camera. Do that on camera. <laughs> You always think they've got an aging squad, Croatia, Modric, oh, he's wearing passes first, and then, you know, he ends up uh, yeah. winning the uh, Champions League. Um, uh, but he's not past that, he's, he's not, he's not actually got, seems to have got better with it. Exactly. He's only just came down in an even more lethal. Yeah. And, um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say Croatia have passed it over there now. I think we should keep on saying this, and they never are. And these two went made the semi-final with the last World Cup. Um, and, you know, Belgium, Always underachieved, always underachieved, considering the time they had. Yeah. Um, but the group stages are quite good at getting out of that. And they've got a second chance, they're quite good at getting through. Um, and the pressure's off, they, they breeze it. So I see them winning the group, yeah. and I see Croatia finishing second. Okay. Uh, you know, on paper, that is how it should be. But then, you know, football, anything can happen. So you see, by groove, you know. Now, Group G, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Yeah, Brazil is a definite, okay. And Switzerland, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, Switzerland's strong. Good yeah. team. Um, done very well in international football over the last few years. They've got some good players. They've got players playing at top levels as well yeah. these days. Um, Serbia as well. You know, they can take that stuff. So, so can we run with I think mean, Cameroon, I've not heard as much about Cameroon as we used to, you know, they, yeah. they were the best African nation for a long time and then they kind of become set, second fiddle to Senegal, Ivory Coast and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ivory Coast obviously not here, uh, and uh, Egypt not here uh, as well, yeah, it's a World Cup. They went to Senegal in the playoff, didn't they? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I see it. I see it as, as you do, I think. It's Brazil and Switzerland in that. Uh, yeah, Switzerland are better than Serbia. That's what I'm yeah, That's the yeah, way yeah, I look at it. Yeah. Uh, Cameroon are not the first. That's a good plan. It's Xhaka, who at the moment is just outstanding. Yeah, okay, he's just outstanding. Anyway, group eight. Last group. Okay, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and Korea Republic. Portugal. Definitely. Safe seven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, as a city fan, I'll see a lot of uh, some of their best players and um, they're great outfit, you know. Um, they don't do they, that they, well, they, they really so. That's the thing, you know, it's like uh, with the similar sort of players that didn't do so well, I see them getting out of the group very easily. Um, so that's what we're talking about. Them, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. You're the guy, you know, traditionally, historically, uh, World Cup team, but um, not really produced that much in recent years. But I think they've got a group. I think they've got a group as well. Yeah, they're they're better. Better. Yeah. I think they, you know, they've got some decent players. Um, 
If you look at the finals against, uh, they find the uh, the Euros, the final against Italy, Southgate bottled it. Yeah, I said again, I've said already, Southgate bottled it. I said he went to the defensive. defensive. He had Harry Kane playing deep in our half. Okay, it was the best chance that we've had in a long while to actually win the Euros. And he bottled it. That's win a tournament, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and to be totally honest, I don't know if Gareth Southgate is the right man okay, for us. I just will. <laughs> and we said, we said that before the start of the year. I mean, ultimately we were proven right, but we were obviously proven a lot wrong on the journey to the final. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still think, he's, still think he doesn't have a plan, still doesn't know, think he knows his best team, doesn't play particularly good formations. Um, I, I just... I still think he's it's, it's not, not got the experience as a manager to be in charge of such an important um, uh, And he still told him, you know, <laughs> such an important And he still speaks with Harry Maguire. He's not even, you know, not even playing. I mean, it's ridiculous that it's taken quite a lot of players who haven't played as well. Walker's been out uh, after an operation and he's going. I think uh, Phillips is going as well from City, who's only just come back and he's played a few minutes. Um, he's going there with a team that's not played a lot of football, um, and I think he's not got. He just picks a group of good players, and I don't think he, that's a particularly good way to approach management. Um, no, he's not. We may be proven wrong with him. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. Okay, right. But hey, I don't think so. But a little bit on Wales. I think Wales have got the right. I've got the right attitude. They have got the team spirit. They, they play together as a unit, and I think that's why I fancy Wales a little bit more here because I mean, it's just feel like they've got a little bit more confidence going into it about the way that they're playing football. Whereas I think the England players probably are now starting to realise that I mean neither of these team have team won a game in the nations uh, league, whatever it is. And um, but I say I look at Wales group and I think it was a good thing. Look at England's and you think. Yeah, that's not as tough. That wasn't as tough. And um, we didn't win a single game. We lost twice to Hungary in that as well. And I don't think we're going into this tournament with any confidence whatsoever. I thought Wales can take a lot of credit from what they did in the Nations League. I agree with you. And like I said, you know, on paper, England and Wales should go through. It wouldn't surprise me if England don't get through the group stages. Or even Wales don't get through the group stages. It wouldn't surprise me if we ran in USA and get through the group stages. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm supporting. In England and Spring Wells, I want them both to get through to the last 16. But do I have 100% confidence? No. That he can. Stop uh, talking to the boss. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> Anything else? Uh, I think that's, uh, I mean, I mean, that's it. I mean, I, I think to go beyond the group stages now uh, would be a mistake because we've notoriously bad at predicting these things. Um, but I will go for overall prediction for the tournament. Um, so I'm going to go for the, who I think are going to be the two finalists. And I'm going to base that on Denmark and France being the reverse to what everyone thinks is in Group D. Denmark win the Group France for the second. And I'm going to go for a French Belgium final. Okay, okay, that's good. I'm not uh, coming out with anything. Yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wait to see who gets through to the last 16 and then I'm going to give my predictions. I will, I will be able to regret this so <laughs> later. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> anyway, anyway, listen, thanks a lot. Okay, I know that you know you're, you're inundated with work. I know you, you know your family priorities. Okay, it's always a pleasure to have Matt here with us. He's one of the founding members. Okay, of on the volley. Okay, we do miss him. He does fuck up sometimes, but we do miss him. Okay, <laughs> and there was, a, there was a video he done one night. He was pissed out with it. Yeah, put it here. Put it up. Okay. And it was only half of it. I had to get it, <laughs> give it a bit straight I thought he was just right out of time on that, that second. <laughs> <laughs> no, joking aside, great to have you back, okay? Um, and you'll be seeing, hopefully, a lot more of Matt, I'd say, for the World Cup. Um, your knowledge of football is second to none. I okay, don't really appreciate that. We need that. And uh, that's it. Do you want to give a shout out to everyone? Just uh, anyone who's watching here, thank you, thank you very much for speaking, taking the time to listen to us talk uh, about football. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, for me, Matt, I'm, I'm out. Okay, don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Moose I'm out.